just published uh, a Newsweek op-ed today uh, about counter UAS and the waning uh, authorities here in the United States that hang in the balance. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of statistics in there, all from, by the way, testimony to Congress uh, from the Department of Homeland Security and Department of Justice. So again, not making these things up, uh, no embellishment, this stuff is real. And frankly, the only, uh, you know, all it takes is one, right? It, it's just like, I'll call it one and done because one really bad incident and thank God with Gatwick, nobody was actually injured or nobody died. There was no significant amount of property damage. It was just an interruption that cost that much money. Imagine a real scenario where, you know, somebody is killed, right? So um, I don't think it's hard to imagine, honestly, because um, we're seeing things in the Ukraine uh, on the Ukraine-Russian battlefield uh, that are, I think, changing the game for everybody. And especially, and Martin, with your, with your military background, I'm, I'm sure you would concur, um, you know, commercial drones and the way they're being used and uh, not a, a great logical leap to think, all right, if they can do that there, they can do that and pick a country's homeland, right? Mm. So, um, you know, I, I think we are hitting, honestly, critical mass. And in fact, you guys have a really cool drone incident tracker on your website. Uh, so again, more facts. These are, these are all pulled from real world incidents um, that anybody can go to the Defense Solutions website and check out. Um, one of the ones that jumped out at me, Martin, and I, I know we talked about this uh, with some of your colleagues last year a bit, but I still think it's amazing. Uh, yeah. the incident in Slovakia, uh, with, All right. with yes. the, Pope. the Pope. Yeah. Tell yeah, the Pope incident. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Pope incident. Tell us about that one. Um, well, I think, yeah, it's, it's well publicized and it's, it's, it's in the public domain. So, you know, this is one of those few incidents that we, we can talk about. Um, but you know, this is again, just another great example of the, of, of the, of security equipment, such as, you know, Enforce Air doing its job in the background and allowing, you know, somebody as eminent as the Pope. Uh, to to continue with his his business, uh, I mean, in the past, that the, you know, they may have had to call in a, a major security operation. Uh, the Pope would have been whisked away. All of those you know thousands of people that have gathered to see see him would have been disappointed, uh, and of course, you know, the visit would have been uh, would not have been a success. However, um, in you know in the event our system was deployed, uh, it did detect a drone. And the authorities um, you know, decided in this incident to fend off the drone, to send it back to the uh, the pilot. Um, they deemed it not to be a, a, a you know a, um, a, you know, a nuisance rather than a you know a, a key threat. Um, of course, they did have the option, should they have chosen to do so, to take control of the drone and to land it wherever they wanted to. Uh, and you know, in either option, they were able to locate, uh, would have been able to locate where the pilot was uh, and deal with that. And so. You know, again, again, and I keep coming back to this, and I will keep coming back to this, proportional policing of a security incident. Yeah, so, and when you said a thousand, I mean, we're talking over 60,000 people that had gathered yeah. there to, to hear the Pope during this particular mass. That, so, uh, you know, an, another one of these VIP, significant mass gathering type events mm -hmm. uh, where, like you said, in this case, it was a nuisance. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, but until you take it down or, you know, run it against your, your database to determine, okay, do we have this thing registered? Is it authorized to be in this area? You, know, you don't know that, right? So uh, another wonderful example. So thanks for sharing that. Um, I want to I wanna kind of pivot back a little bit to talk about the, the authorities. And when I say authorities, you know, the legislative, the, the legal authorities, uh, because in the United States, as I mentioned, um, you know, ours are, let's just say, hanging by a thread, right? We, we uh, had um, authority that came, I, I believe it was in the FAA Reauthorization Act that was sunsetting this past uh, September, October timeframe. And uh, it was kind of extended and then like extended again. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everybody's wondering like, what's going to happen? Yeah. Because uh, what that authority gave was uh, to the Department of Homeland Security, Department of Justice, United States Coast Guard, which, by the way, everybody is part of DHS and not part of the Department of Defense or military. Mm -hmm. um, it gave them that authority to detect, identify, 
you know, track and, you know, under the right circumstances, mitigate that threat. Yeah. Uh, right. And their approval authorities and everybody issued their own policies and everything like that. Uh, but everybody's wondering what's, what's going to happen with that. So uh, we've got at the FAA Reauthorization Act coming up this year. What What's the status in the UK uh, from that kind of legal standpoint? Because what, what we're coming up against here, why people need affirmative authority from mm. our Congress and you know our legislative branch uh, is because there's a whole host of criminal laws uh, in Title 18 that were written, you know, for a, other purposes, never intended uh, for this kind of, yeah. never intended, let's just say, to inhibit law enforcement from doing their job. Uh, yes. In fact, it was more to protect privacy, things like the Wiretap Act and, and the Pen Register statute, yeah. et cetera, here. What, mm -hmm. What's your parallel over there in the UK? How's that looking? Um, well, as, you, as you might imagine, it's a very similar picture. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, yeah, our sort of common history, you might imagine that you know, we have similar uh, laws and regulations and, and legislation in place that um, you're absolutely right, uh, was put in place uh, for very good reasons but did not ever consider that it would need to um, uh, be used in the context of uh, taking control of a drone. Um, so yeah, we, we yeah, just to list a few, yeah, we have, the, and I'm, I'm reading from my list here, but forgive me, but yeah, you have the Computer Misuse Act, we have the Investigatory Powers Act, the Criminal Damage Act, the Aviation Maritime Security Act, the Civil Aviation Act, the Air Navigation Order. Uh, and then we you know, have to dial in people like uh, Ofcom, which is our um, RF, uh, you know, frequency control organization within the country. So, you know, you can't transmit without a license from them. Oh, so that's, you know, that's like our, in the US, that's like our federal yeah. communications uh, commission, yeah. FCC equivalent then. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, now, uh, so all of that legislation exists for very good reasons. Uh, and, and in order to, um, you know, if you like, uh, get beyond that and be able to use mitigation uh, capability. We have something in the UK called the Police Powers Act. Uh, so the police can apply for authority uh, to, you know, if you like, step outside of that, those legal parameters in order to use technology such as counter UAS. Um, what they need for that is what we call a part three authority. Uh, they can apply that, but it currently requires um, an extremely senior police officer um, you know, sort of deputy chief constable level uh, to uh, give that authority. And they can only give that authority with a very clear operational plan, if you like, and for a distinct reason for doing that. So, you know, they're, they're currently conducting an operation on a criminal gang and they want to, um, uh, you know, uh, listen into their telephones. Yeah, that, that's a great example of, you know, of when uh, they might want to use this authority. So it's, a, it's a quite a blunt instrument, if you like. To, yeah. um, for the uh, dynamic nature of uh, counter-US incidents.